Good morning everyone! So in this video you and I are going to talk about outsourcing! Yes! Let's get into it. Now outsourcing is... It's a tr you may have heard this and this is not unique to IT in any way but I, su I suspect that Hollywood has made us kind of accept this stereotypical outsourcing I, I don't know what to call it but the mental picture I see a lot of people having is you have a bunch of IT people sitting in India for example answering the support line and in the programming world it usually goes all right we outsource this and usually when we outsource something it's going to be a c-sharp or job application and then every, all the development is happening somewhere somewhere else this is actually this is actually true and it's actually the sort of it's actually, it's actually happened it's uh, it's exactly what happened to me at Ticketmaster or rather that, that that is in essence the way that they shut down the office here in uh, in Gothenburg so the way it went and the way it usually goes is that a big IT company realizes that hey we can cut a lot of cost by moving the development to a country where the average salary for and availability of professional developers and usually it's consultancies is you know it's that you have things available to you and it's cheaper and all that good stuff it's a financial decision but it's not a tech decision and I'll tell you why because a lot of people that I see have this notion that outsourcing is a threat to you as somebody who's living in one of these countries where we, you know we actually pay our our people well and we don't try to exploit the instability uh, of the country or the financial situation which is the case for for this outsourcing trend and I also wanted to tell you that it's not all companies who outsource and they don't do it for one very particular reason. And I'll tell you that, that as well. So the biggest motivation for outsourcing something is that it will save you time and money for the most part. And it, it really boils down to money. At least from my perspective, I can only guess at what other possible reasons there could be but that's the big reason outsourcing things out usually means money saving and it does mean that on paper now what do I mean by it means that on paper well this is a tricky one one of the things that you will find and this is also one of the reasons why I am very careful with remote developers and working remotely. The reason why I'm careful about this is because there is a lot of benefits to having people in-house or having people that are working in the co country that it, and so forth and so forth. And let me tell you why. If, let's say, it's actually something that we discuss in to great in great length in my company where we have different integrations to different countries and so forth because if you let's say for the sake of argument that you have a platform such as i don't know it manages legal documents for example and let's say that you decide to put this idea to, and to, to work, like basically to put it into production and you want to outsource the coding and all of that good stuff to say India or the Ukraine or so somewhere where for the most part you can get that a little bit cheaper what will happen is that not only will you have a language barrier for the most part you'll have like because you don't have access to your developers you're going to have to work completely remotely but the biggest problem in this scenario is that the specifics of how the application actually has to be structured and making sure that these legal documents are handled with a very a, a large amount of care is a bit troublesome for you odds are that you will not be compliant or that you will have issues 
with actually structuring the application in the correct way. You might actually start breaking the law, not because you want to, but because the developers are, they don't have the necessary cultural skills specific to the country that you are living in or the, the customer that you're catering to. And that actually affects the overall product. So, and I see this quite a bit where you have people who they bring in developers and engineers from say India and they build something for the company and when it all is said and done the product got shipped in a very reasonable amount of time and to make to a lower cost but the end results are sub quality and that's not because the people, I mean, the skilled developers in India, that has nothing to do with their skill. It has to do with the inherent issues of having remote workers. Everything gets much slower, it gets communications, all that stuff gets much trickier when you don't work in the same office. And other things start to factor in sense of ownership, you can just throw that out. You do not go and outsource your product if you want the product to be high quality. Trust me, there is no such thing. Outsourcing is something really large companies do, at least in my experience, to get speed and cost reduction. It's not about quality. Because if it was about quality, you would have a completely different approach. If you're, uh, if you're kidding, you're kidding yourself if you think that someone who, like, like, uh, that a consultant is going to, with a, who is working a com completely remotely, they never even talk to their own colleagues working in another part of the world, is going to have this, this sensation that, yeah, I'm really invested in this project. I'm, I really want this company to make it. I really I, and I share their values and I want to be part of this. It's not happening, guys. It's not. It might. I'm not going to say that this is like a rule. It's, this is just my personal experience. You don't get people invested in this way. But I also want you to know that. The thing that I'm trying to say here is not that outsourcing is bad, because it's not. It depends on, uh, on your needs, basically. It, it depends, it's, it's, a, it's the right thing to do in a specific situation. Now, if you are a very large company that is very geared towards the business perspective and the business side of things, and your approach to solving problems for better or for worse, this is the way that, at least from me, it seems that Ticketmaster is running their business. When I was working there, for the most part, the engineering department was treated, at least from, it, that was the sensation I got, the engineering department was really just treated as a necessary evil because most of the business value and all the priorities were structured in, in the business part of 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 the company so the way it it kind of went at least from my perspective this might be completely wrong but it, the the way it looked was that you signed a deal with a client and that client had certain requirements and then you went to the development department and simply told them make us compliant with this contract that's the process it might from engineering and ux that perspective that's a horrible way because you don't have a way of that, that that's going to make the prod <laughs> yeah I, i'm just gonna say that's a really bad way to work if you're going for a lot of quality if you want to make the project the product really consistent and really high quality and so forth but it's a great way of working if the main interest is to gets as many clients as possible it basically just becomes a factory you take in a request and you just make it make yourself compliant and that's how you maintain your business so outsourcing in that situation is perfect because you as a company ticketmaster are not necessarily trying to be an it company they want to sell tickets they want to get money make money so 
why, unless there's a really big benefit to having in-house developers, it's actually very convenient to be able to outsource that to a consultancy. It's actually it's the trend you see in really large companies, not just Ticketmaster. Telia here in Gothenburg does it, Volvo does it. It's actually a trend that if you want to work for one of these really gigantic corporations, they are actually most, most of the time spending a little bit more money or a lot more money on hiring consultancies because it allows them to pull up a project very quickly. They don't have to maintain like staff or all this overhead process and then they can fire everybody when they need to. Like they get more flexible and they have the money. So for them, it's actually a big benefit to having outsourcing options. But if you are a smaller company, or if you're the sort of company who goes for a really high quality product, outsourcing is a really bad choice. Because as I said, it doesn't grow ownership. And it creates all these subtle small issues, especially as I said, in communications. That's just my experience. Usually the rule of thumb is proximity. I would say that's the constant in all of this. The closer somebody is to the source, the more, the, the higher the quality. The closer the UX person and the developer is to the business, the better the product. The more, that's usually what you find in small startups. That's also why startups have a really good way, good, re, like most small startups, you don't think so. But a lot of these companies, they actually get really popular very quickly and they get bought out by bigger companies because when you have this small little tight nested group who really cares about the project, they can produce quality at a rate that the big companies can't. It's just, as I said, it's just two different ways of catering to the needs of a business. So don't think that outsourcing is a, just a bad thing and don't think it's, ju it's just a good thing. It very much depends on the situation of the company. Have a great day.